welcome to Gunplay TV, sponsored by Hobbylink Japan. As part of our MG build today, we're going to be looking at the legs. But before we get to that, let's have a look at the latest kit that just came through our doors. It's the latest HGUC kit, the RGM79C Gym Type C. With this kit, they've thrown in a lot of extras, such as, of course, its custom weaponry, as well as what I find pretty exciting, even though I can't find it here. Three sets of hands. So when it comes to building and posing it with its weapons, you can just swap the hands in and out. That's an excellent addition for an HD line. Now it's time to work on the legs. So we've been comparing the new 2.0 frame with the version cop frame that we had. And as you can see with the older version cop frame, there's not a lot of flexibility when it comes to the knee and even less when it comes to the ankle because you basically just have this one ball joint. But with the 2.0 frame, just like the arm, you have a lot of flexibility, a lot of movement as well. In the foot, there's three points of articulation and this gimmick. This is designed so that the 2.0 frame can fit in the MG G, uh, G Fighter kit, which is right here. This is on sale for 50% off, by the way. So if you're thinking of picking up a version 2.0 frame, pick up a G Fighter as well and make the set. So we've been talking about the excellent articulation in the 2.0 frames. Starting right from the foot with the gimmick, you can see they have these three points of articulation here. The frame design is actually pretty, pretty well done, pretty unique with these swivels here. You can understand how they are able to get that gimmick to work. And then the ankle is even more interesting because you have a, a pivot, a swivel, and then your ball joint which connects to your foot. So this is why the ankle is able to rotate almost 360 degrees. Another interesting part is the actuators in the frame. You actually see them moving from certain angles, even with the armor on. It's very good. And we're going to have a look at how Bandai made that happen. So with this actuator, you slide it into the opening at the top of the thigh here, and you slide it down, and you can see this is where your movement comes from. And with the other part here, you assemble these two pieces and you have this type of motion already and you slide it in here like this until you hear click and then you tuck it in so you have to make sure you trim it it's supposed to be tucked in like this and this will move in and out so be careful this is very fragile I've got my two pieces with the actuators and I'm going to just put them onto the knee part of the frame here. This part is really simple. They just fit in here like this. And then you put the cover on. And there's my knee. And as you can see, flexibility. It's key. So we had a question in the last episode from someone using the initials KL. And his question was, What's the difference between the Mark Setter and the Mark Softer? A lot of people have been asking these questions and you can find it all over the internet. Basically, the Setter is like an adhesive. You use it before you're going to put the decal on the kit. Whereas the Softer helps the de decal suction onto the plastic and you apply it after the decal is in place. We're going to show you how you can do that. All right, now before you start cutting up your decals and putting your decals on your kit, you want to make sure that you have everything at your disposal. So here's what I tend to use when I'm doing decals. I have my little tray for the hot water, tweezers, cotton swab, toothpick, paper towel or toilet paper, mmm, two ply. The piece that you're going to be working on, and of course your decal sheet and your scissors. And then what we're going to be using today, the Mark Setter and the Mark Softer. So my decal is in the water, it's uh, getting ready here, and while I wait I'll take a little bit of my Mr. Mark Setter. This is the adhesive, remember? You want to get this decal to stick to the contours of the plastic. If it doesn't and there's some air bubbles trapped underneath, what you might end up with is something called silvering, which is when the decal doesn't uh, become transparent. You'll actually see a reflection off of it. It looks silver, and that's uh, probably something to be avoided. So now I've got my toothpick. This is how I do it. Remember, you don't have to do it this way. If you have a decal tray, it's probably a lot quicker. Make sure I have everything here. All right, maybe this decal has been in the water long enough here. Or maybe not. 
take it with my tweezers, place it onto the plastic and slowly take the backing away like this. Now, when it comes to moving it in spot, I can take my cotton swab, move it around a little bit, find out where it's going to go. I'm looking at this upside down, so I'm not quite sure I got the alignment right, but that's okay. Once you have it where you want it to be, you can take some of your tissue paper and carefully press it onto the plastic. Remove that excess liquid. Uh, what I tend to do with smaller decals is take another cotton swab and actually press it, getting all the excess liquid out. So now the decal's on. If I want to make sure that it adheres to the plastic more and it sucks in, this is where the Mark Softer comes from. You don't need a lot because this will actually deform your decal if you use it too much. So what I tend to do is just scrape it on here and lightly brush it over and then leave it. Leave it until it's completely dry. So we're going to put on another decal in a closer shot so you have a better uh, view of what it is we're actually doing here. So my decal's in the water and while it's doing that, let's apply a tiny little bit of mark setter. Remember not too much. Take my tweezers and my toothpick and let's retrieve the decal from the water. All right, here we go. Let's slide it on. Move it into position. Looks good to me. And because it's a smaller decal, I'm just going to use the cotton swab and push it on here. Once it's where you want it to be, this is where the mark softer comes in. Remember, only a little bit. And just brush it on. Let it dry. All right, we shed some light, hopefully, on the difference between the mark setter and the mark softer. Remember, this is plastic modeling. You're free to do whatever you want. Experiment, find what works for you. Personally, I use the mark softer all the time, but the mark setter, only when I'm working with curved surfaces and things like that. Also, check out the latest sec uh, entry in the Model World section of Hobby Link TV, and you'll find out how you can create realistic battle damage for your Gundam kits. Also, I've completed the Part 3 article for the MG Wing build, so check that out as well. All right, that wraps up today's episode. The next time you see this full armor Gundam, we're going to be putting on the finishing touches, which is all the full armor. Also, we're going to be announcing the winners of the Playing With Plastic competition, so stay tuned for that. We've got hundreds of amazing entries to go through, and we hope you're just as excited to see them as we were. Also, the next episode of uh, Gunpla TV is going to be a little bit different from what you normally see. I'm not going to give anything away right now, but uh, stay tuned for a big surprise. See you later.